Any questions? Yeah, we said in the previous year we published it. We're going to come out with something again about it soon. But listen, in general, there are some etirim for the Ashkenazim that uh, some of them can rely on. Uh, the problem is that none of the etirim count on two things. One condition is the fact none of the etirim, none of the permissions count on the fact that the uh, wigs are um, not modest. Today's wigs are not modest. The ones that the rabbis permitted in previous generations look nothing like the ones today. So no one permitted the wigs of today. As a matter of fact, there was a uh, video that just came out by Rav Kanievsky. They showed him a 10-year-old wig. A 10-year-old wig, so which means that it's in horrible shape and, you know, it obviously looks less realistic. Uh, they showed him a 10-year-old wig and they asked him, is this allowed? Short wig, but 10 years old and thinking that if there was ever th anything allowed, this would be it. And he looked at it and he goes, absolutely not. This is, looks too realistic. So, this is the G'dolah of the Ashkenazim, not the Sfaradim. He's one of the in general, but in, you know, point is, this is anyone's Ashkenazi. He has to hold by Rav Kanievsky. He says, it's, too it's a 10 year old wig. 10 year old wig, he says, it's too real. You can't wear this. It's supposed to be obvious that it's not real hair. Here, today's wigs, whether it's the real ones or the fake ones, the whole goal is to make them look like real hair. So people are completely confused. So number one, no posek ever said that today's wigs are legal, that today's wigs are allowed. No posek ever. Number two, number two, and we'll finalize with that. No posek ever permitted idol worship. There's a whole Gemara, Masechet Avodah Zara, over 70 dapim, 70 pages, or over 150 pages of the Pim explaining how one is never allowed to benefit from anything that was ever associated to I idol worship. And after very, very thorough research, we know for sure that it's practically impossible, practically impossible to find a wig that does not have a source or a connection to idol worship. Impossible. Unless you went directly to the person that's cutting their hair in the middle of America or middle of Israel, oh, let me shave your head, I'm taking it right now, and confirm they're not idol worshippers, it's impossible to know. Why? Because all of the wigs in the world come from India and China. And there was actually another video that came out, there was a pianit, a, a woman that she sells wigs and she puts them on people's head. She said that they made a lot of balagan about this idol worship thing, about... Uh, 10, 15 years ago, Gdolea Do started, started uh, what's it called, burning wigs in Jerusalem. When they found out that they're all coming from, uh, from India, and it's the source is idol worship, because you know, the temples over there became the second richest entity in the world because many pilgrims, millions and millions and hundreds of millions of people, you know, sacrificed their hair as a way of Avodah Zarah, of idol worship. Um, so long story short, when they found out that all of the wigs in the world come from idol worship, they banned them. They started burning all of them. This panit says, yeah, that was all nonsense. That was all planned by the businessmen. Why? Which unfortunately look like they're religious. Why? Because the very next day, they already had a, uh, what's it called? A, uh, a kosher shipment, a container. Container already ready at the port. She says, listen, anyone that knows even a little bit of business knows to get a container from China, from India, from anywhere, takes a month and a half. A month and a half it takes. And what? All of a sudden, this container is full of kosher wigs. All of a sudden, they're all kosher. Day after they burned everything, all of a sudden, the whole market can be supplied with kosher wigs now. Next day. Next day. Not even like a week. They didn't even hide it. So anyone that wants to believe this nonsense of there's kosher wigs, there's non-kosher wigs, there's no such thing. It's either because, it's either not kosher because it's not modest, or it's not kosher because Abu Dazara. That's it. There is no kosher wig in the world. I don't care what anybody says because, again, you look at what the poskim say, there's no such thing as a kosher wig. As a matter of fact, there's a, con there's a contest in Israel. There's a contest in Israel. They want to pay a dayan, $100,000, which is an enormous amount of money in Israel, 
They're willing to pay it any Dayan, $100,000, any Avlech, $18,000, any Talmit Chacham, $36,000, if you can prove that one wig today, any wig today, it's kosher. Any wig is kosher, they, they'll give them $100,000 cash. Ten years they're having this competition, no one's ever tried it. Facebook that it's very easy for a woman to become a Karabim. Everything, everything. It's very difficult. It's very difficult for people to pass this test, but again, there's no shortcuts in the Torah. You either have your or you don't. What about the kosher Everything Depends. Depends what's kosher. If it's food, if you're gonna consume it, then it needs to be kosher. But if it's a uh, Yeah, that's nonsense. That's just that's marketing. Not that's nonsense. That's not. That's like, for example, when you go to uh, the baby arras, they have baby water. They sell baby water for four dollars, which they buy from you know the regular store for ninety nine cents. But again, they you know capitalism also depends on stupid people, you know, and, and that's that's just a reality. There's a sucker born well, every day. Became a kosher became a business too. Yeah. Yes, no, it's not, you don't need to get kosher. There's no such thing as a kosher apple. There's no such thing as a a lot of these things. They get you like. Kosher sponge, that's complete nonsense. Yeah, there's sponges that are kosher. Yeah, there's all types of nonsense. Listen, if once you're connected to a Rav, once you're connected to a Rav, once you can ask questions, once you tell them the truth, once you t- you live the truth, once you're connected to Hashem, no sin will come to you. Why? Because you're, you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to right, do the right thing, Hashem is going to show you the way. But if you're looking for excuses, Hashem will show you a sea of excuses. And you'll die with the tefillin on your head and go straight to Gehenna. You understand? So without Hashem, all of us go to Gan Eden, all of us do tshuva, all of us actually get closer to Hashem Barach, live the truth, teach the truth, learn the truth, and without Hashem, get mala mala and show Am Yisrael how great it really is. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen ve'amen.